I demand complete and immediate surrender from the world's leaders, and to be recognized as the greatest genius in the history of mankind! <laughs> hey there, my fellow Blue Bombers! Today we're diving headfirst into a game where the only thing harder than the bosses is refusing to throw your controller through the screen. Imagine a world where your handyman could potentially save the planet, and robots have more personality than your average reality TV star. That's the Mega Man universe for you, where every leap could lead to victory or yet another unexpected pitfall. And if you stick around, you'll discover how a simple error in the game's code gave birth to one of the franchise's most beloved glitches. Buckle up, we're about to blast through the history, secrets, and legacy of Capcom's iconic Blue Bomber faster than you can say Dr. Wily's next dubious plan. In the mid-1980s, the video game industry was on the cusp of a technological renaissance, and Capcom, a company known at the time for arcade hits, decided to venture into the home console market with a project that would become a cornerstone of gaming, Mega Man, the brainchild of Akira Kitamura, with character designed by Kenji Inafune. Mega Man was born out of ambition, innovation, and a bit of youthful naivete. Kitamura, a planner and designer at Capcom, envisioned a game that combined the straightforward action of arcade classics with the depth and replayability suited for home consoles. The idea was revolutionary, a side-scrolling action game where players could absorb the powers of defeated bosses. This mechanic was not just a gameplay innovation, it was a narrative device, blurring the lines between story and play. The concept of copying abilities from bosses came from an epiphany why not make each victory tangibly reward the player, offering new ways to play and strategize? However, the road to bringing Mega Man to life was fraught with challenges. The technical limitations of the NES meant the development team had to get creative. Kenji Inafune, often mistakenly referred to as the father of Mega Man, joined the project midway and played a pivotal role in character design and finalization. Inafune's work on Mega Man, from the iconic blue armor to the memorable bosses, was done under immense pressure and tight deadlines, often requiring him to work on graphics for characters in a single night. This intense period of creativity under constraint led to the rich, colorful aesthetic that became synonymous with the franchise. Mega Man was a gamble for Capcom. At the time, the industry was dominated by platformers starring established characters like Mario and Link. Capcom's decision to introduce a new IP with a robot protagonist and a non-linear level selection screen was bold. This design choice not only set Mega Man apart, but also introduced a strategic element to the game, as players could choose the order in which they tackled levels, each designed with its unique environmental challenges and boss weaknesses. But this saga begins with Dr. Light, the benevolent scientist who created Mega Man, originally named Rock, designed as a lab assistant. When Dr. Wily, Light's former colleague, turns rogue, reprogramming a series of robots to aid him in his quest for world domination. Rock volunteers to be converted into a battle robot to stop Wily's diabolical plans. This sets the stage for the eternal struggle between good and evil, with Mega Man at the forefront, battling through Wily's forces to restore peace. Character design in Mega Man was both a product of creative genius and technical limitations. Mega Man's iconic blue armor wasn't just a stylistic choice. The NES's limited color palette meant that the developers had to make do with what was available. Blue had more shades than any other color on the NES, allowing for more detailed character sprites. Mega Man's enemies, known as Robot Masters, each embodied their unique abilities. From the scorching flames of Fireman to the icy blasts of Iceman, providing not only a visual feast, but also a tactical puzzle for players to solve. Much like the puzzle of how hitting the like button could possibly make you cooler. Trust me, it's science. But what sets Mega Man apart was not just its gameplay mechanics or its story, but how the two were interwoven. Each robot master Mega Man defeated granted him a new weapon a literal embodiment of the game's underlying message about learning and growing from one's adversaries. This concept resonated with players, teaching that strength often comes from facing challenges head-on and adapting. 
The evolution of characters throughout the series further deepened the narrative. Proto Man, Mega Man's mysterious brother, and Bass, his formidable rival, introduced shades of gray into the black and white conflict between Mega Man and Dr. Wily, adding layers of complexity to the story. These characters were not just obstacles or aids in Mega Man's journey. They were reflections on themes of loyalty, ambition, and what it means to be human. Now, diving into the nuts and bolts of Mega Man, it's clear that the gameplay mechanics themselves are as revolutionary as the characters and story. At its core, Mega Man is a side-scrolling platformer, a genre that was burgeoning in the late 80s. However, Capcom didn't just set out to make another run-of-the-mill platformer. They engineered a gameplay experience that would challenge the norms and set a new standard for the genre. One of the most groundbreaking features introduced by Mega Man was the concept of non-linear level selection. Unlike most games of its time, where players progress through a set sequence of levels, Mega Man offered a choice. Upon booting up the game, players were greeted with a selection screen, presenting them with six robot masters, each ensconced with their own uniquely themed level. This choice wasn't just superficial, it added a strategic layer to the game. Each robot master was weak to the weapon obtained from defeating another, creating a rock-paper-scissors dynamic that encouraged players to experiment and find the most effective order to tackle the levels. The gameplay mechanics of absorbing bosses' powers was another stroke of genius. Defeating a robot master granted Mega Man their signature weapon, radically altering how players approached the subsequent levels. This mechanic didn't just add variety, it was a masterclass in game design teaching players to adapt and think critically about their approach. It also introduced a sense of replayability and experimentation that was rare for games at the time. The level design in Mega Man is renowned for its complexity and challenge. Each level was meticulously crafted to match the theme of its robot master, from the fiery furnaces of Heat Man's stage to the electrified corridors of Elect Man's lair. These weren't just aesthetic choices. The levels were designed to test players' mastery of Mega Man's arsenal and their ability to adapt to new challenges. The game's difficulty is legendary with precise jumps, relentless enemies, and devious traps testing the limits of players' skill and patience. Yet, despite its challenge, Mega Man was always fair. The game operated on a set of consistent rules, and success was a matter of skill and learning from failure. This design philosophy resonated with players, turning what could have been frustration into a sense of accomplishment that few games could match. When Mega Man first burst onto the scene in 1987, it was stepping into an arena dominated by heavyweights like Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda. It was a time when the video game industry was finding its footing after the crash of 1983, and success was anything but guaranteed. Despite its innovative gameplay and charismatic blue hero, Mega Man faced an uphill battle in capturing the hearts, minds, and wallets of gamers. Initially, Mega Man didn't light the sales charts on fire. Its performance was modest, and for a moment, it seemed like the Blue Bomber might be doomed to the annals of forgotten video game characters. But as is often the case with Legends, it's not about how you start, it's about the legacy you leave. The game gradually built a dedicated fan base, drawn in by word of mouth and the allure of its challenge and charm. This slow burn of popularity set the stage for its sequels, with Mega Man 2 breaking through as a critical and commercial success, firmly establishing the franchise as a cornerstone of the Capcom empire. The sales performance of Mega Man is a classic underdog story. It's a testament to the game's quality and dedication of its creators that it overcame its initial lukewarm reception to become one of the most beloved franchises in gaming history. The series has sold millions of copies worldwide, spawning numerous sequels, spin-offs, and even influencing other media. But amidst the backdrop of 8-bit landscapes and robotic adversaries, there lies a hidden depth to the game that has captivated players for decades. One of the most intriguing aspects of Mega Man is the story behind its characters' names. In the original Japanese release, Mega Man is known as Rockman, a name that plays into a musical theme with his sister, Roll, creating a rock and roll duo. This theme extends to other characters such as bass, treble, further showcasing the developer's love for music and clever wordplay. The decision to change Rockman's name to Mega Man for Western audiences was made by Capcom's US team. 
aiming for a name that resonated more with American players while retaining the essence of the character's power and heroism. Another fascinating piece of trivia is the creation of the robot masters themselves. The bosses in the Mega Man series are notorious for their unique design and challenging battles. What many may not know is that starting from Mega Man 2, Capcom held contests where fans could submit their own designs for Robot Masters. This innovative approach not only engaged the community but also led to the creation of some of the series' most memorable characters, like Quick Man and Bubble Man. It's a testament to the creative energy between the developers and the game's fan base, blurring the lines between creator and audience. But perhaps one of the most beloved glitches in video game history also comes from the Mega Man series, the select button glitch. Present in the first game allowed players to pause and unpause the game rapidly, causing Mega Man's attacks to register multiple hits on bosses. While this glitch made defeating bosses significantly easier, it also became a beloved exploit that players used to overcome the game's most challenging difficulty. It's a quirky reminder of the days when glitches weren't just frustrations, but part of the charm and discovery of playing video games. Now as we power down our journey through the electrifying world of Mega Man, it's clear that this iconic blue hero has zapped his way into our hearts and refused to budge, much like that one screw in your IKEA furniture that just won't tighten. From its humble beginnings to becoming a beacon of hope for robots and humans alike, and a source of endless frustration for gamers tackling those infamous spikes, Mega Man has proven that, with enough ingenuity, a dash of music-themed characters, and the occasional exploit, even a small blue robot can make a giant leap for video game kind. So whether you're a seasoned veteran able to breeze through the Wily's Fortress without breaking a sweat, or a newcomer wondering why your character just doesn't shoot up, Remember, in the world of Mega Man, every jump, every shot, and every exploitation is a note in the symphony of gaming. Just be sure to hit the select button if things get a little too tough. I promise, we won't tell. If you enjoyed this look back into the history of Mega Man, click this video here to see more from the Retro Reload. And as always, thank you for watching.